In today's farm report, while many producers want to make sure they have enough forage for their operations, they also should be looking at making sure that that forage stays in good condition and avoids spoilage. Emily Wilness with the University of Minnesota Extension Service Office shares some tips on how to minimize spoilage on your operation. A good forage supply is critical to many livestock operations. No doubt farmers look for any means possible to maximize their forage inventory. Here's a simple question. How much of your forages are you losing to shrink? Now, minimizing shrink is an issue that should be on top of the priority list as it impacts several aspects of a successful farming operation. Priorities may be constantly changing on your farm, but it's time to think about what we can be doing to ensure we're losing as little forage as possible to shrink. It's important to keep in mind that shrink occurs in multiple ways. Stored forage can be subject to dry matter and forage quality losses. Losses of dry hay stored inside a barn are usually not a concern, however, even for barn stored hay. Losses tend to increase when hay moisture is above 20%. Each mechanism in forage preservation process will probably cause loss of a forage dry matter. Some losses are either mechanical or biological. For haymaking, most of the losses come from mechanical or weather damage, whereas for silage making, most losses will occur at storage and feed-out stages. In general, round bales are usually subject to greater losses than small square bales because they tend to remain outside with no protection between baling and feeding. As a part of good silage management, we should take into consideration the following steps to help reduce shrink. Harvest at correct maturity and moisture concentration. Fill the bunker as rapidly as possible. Pack well and seal the bunker to reduce oxygen infiltration for at least 14 days to allow the fermentation process. Feed appropriate rate to reduce face exposure to oxygen. Unload an average of 2 to 6 inches per day to keep the surface smooth. This will limit aerobic deterioration and will help to reduce any possible spoilage. Discard deteriorated silage, which will help prevent livestock health problems. Reducing shrink is a crucial management project on any farm at any time, so make sure that it is a priority on your farm today and every day. This is Emily Wilmis with University of Minnesota Extension. Despite the western drought and pockets of drought in the southeast, U.S. pasture and rangeland are for the most part in good shape. On a national scale, looking at the July 5th numbers, we see 66% of the U.S. range and pasture lands rated good to excellent, just 9% very poor to poor. USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey says that represents a slight improvement from a week ago when the numbers were at 65% good to excellent and 9% very poor to poor. The last time pasture and rangeland conditions in the U.S. were rated higher, was 1995. Rippey says that if the 2015 figures can be maintained, this puts the pasture and rangeland in record-setting territory for this time of year. As for some of the specifics... We continue to see a few states, a handful of states, with more than four-fifths of the pastures rated good to excellent, most of them in the Midwest and including Illinois at 82 percent good to excellent, Wisconsin also at 82 percent. But the heat and the drought in the Northwest continues to take a toll. For USDA Radio, Susan Carter, Washington, D.C. Sports drinks are a popular thing for many people that work out, but as the USDA's Rod Bain reports, they might not be the best source of nutrients and energy required to replenish the body. As the temperature starts to rise, and it starts to get very, very hot outside, well, perhaps even inside, too, if you are doing a workout at the gym, for example, You look for something to quench your thirst. Maybe reach for one of those sports drinks. Julie Garden Robinson of North Dakota State University Extension explains the concept behind sports drinks. Sports drinks provide carbohydrates and electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, and chloride. They're actually made for those engaged in physical activity to help athletes rehydrate and keep their energy levels high. Electrolytes are generally minerals. We need these for the contraction of muscles, the firing of nerve impulses, so they're very important. If we do not have enough electrolytes in our body, we may begin to lose our coordination, our concentration, our strength, and even our endurance. But she says that sports drinks are many times often not necessary to replenish minerals and rehydrate. 
sports drink is really needed for people engaged in more heavy physical activity that's 60 minutes or longer. And Garden Robinson says we should keep in mind that sports drinks usually come in very large bottles. Sports drinks can provide a lot of calories, so it's important to check the nutrition facts label and find out how many servings you're actually consuming. One large bottle may actually provide four servings, so you need to multiply that nutrition information by four. So a 50-calorie serving would actually have 200 calories if you drank the entire bottle. She says drinking water is your best bet to keep hydrated and replenish your body fluids and minerals during long workouts and physical activity. As a rule of thumb, don't wait until you feel thirsty to have a drink of water because thirst is usually a sign that your body has needed liquids for a while. And after a physical activity, if you weigh yourself and you find out that you've lost a pound, that's typically water weight, so you want to drink two cups of fluid for every pound that you lose. And perhaps you should consider consuming another type of sports drink after extensive physical activity, such as fruit juice or even milk. Several research studies have been done, especially on chocolate milk. And chocolate milk seems to have the right blend of carbohydrates as well as minerals to help rehydrate the body. So that has become the new sports drink. Try milk or even fruit juice because milk and fruit juice contain the carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals that are not found in all sports drinks. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. It was the year we first heard this hit. That's the power of love. And when some people first heard this. Thank you for calling USDA's Meat and Poultry Hotline. The hotline began on July 1st, 1985. Tina Haynes runs the Agriculture Department's hotline operation, which started 30 years ago as a phone service. Callers with food safety questions calling toll-free, talking to USDA experts, and since July of 85... We have responded to over 15 million inquiries. About 3 million on the phones, the rest on other technologies, email, live chat, virtual online expert named Karen, Facebook, cell phone apps. What's the next technology? I'm not smart enough to figure out what that will be, but we're going to try and stay on top of it. But they will keep the phones, so if you call the hotline phone number weekdays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern, you can still talk to a real person. Some callers are skeptical. They can't believe that people actually answer the call. They think I'm a recording. Recording. Uh, recording. <laughs> the phone number is 1-888-MP-HOTLINE or get your internet browser looking for Meat and Poultry Hotline. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington.